good morning year five and welcome to your English lesson. Um, I'm going to share my screen so you need to remember to have a pen and a piece of paper. It might be helpful to have the work from last lesson but we're not really um, going to be looking at rhetorical questions in detail today but you will be using them for a little bit of your writing. So if you'd like them to help you that's fine or just bring yourself a new fresh piece of paper. I'm going to share my screen now. So the date is Wednesday the 13th of January and we are going to investigate persuasive language today. Our starter, what I would like you to do is tell me whether these questions are a rhetorical question or not a rhetorical question. You can draw the table if you'd like, you can pause and write it out or you can just write the question and then put yes or no next to it. So is how old are you a rhetorical question? Do you really want to ruin the planet a rhetorical question? Love surfing in the ocean a rhetorical question? Do you like cheese or rhetorical question? Tell me yes or no. And when, you, when you're ready to move on, press play. So how old are you is not a rhetorical question. It does need an answer. Remember our rhetorical questions are questions that don't need an answer and are trying to persuade someone. How old are you can have an answer. You would say, I am 10 if you're in year five or I am nine if you're in year five. Do you really want to ruin the planet? That was like our, our starting questions yesterday. So do you really is one a rhetorical question? What about love surfing in the ocean? Yes, it is a rhetorical question. We're asking them, but we don't need an answer. Do you like cheese? That is a question. It's, it's not a rhetorical question, but it is a question. It's a question that needs an answer. Yes, I like cheese. No, I don't like cheese. So check those. Okay, you can have another little read of our um, model text. I'll read it for us. You can read along with me if you'd like or look at your story map. So make every drop count. About 95% of water that enters our homes goes down the drain. How will you stop water waste? As a nation, it is my genuine and passionate belief that if we do not stop squandering water, our exceptional sturdy planet will become a dilapidated disused wasteland. In order to articulate my arguments, I'll be exploring our responsibilities and how we can make alternative choices to rectify the damage to our planet. First of all, we are all responsible for the wasteful way we live in the UK and must ensure there is enough water for future generations. Only this week, 10 million gallons of water were expended in the UK. That's enough to fill 1 million baths. While I understand that water is vital in the survival of humans who need water to stay hydrated, clean and eat, there is a significant amount of natural clean water being unnecessarily wasted. Secondly, we should be more mindful of minor changes we can implement to improve the wastage of water in the UK. Your actions could have a tremendous influence on the future of our unique, vibrant planet. So what can you do? Why not mend your own clothes? It takes 2,700 gallons of water to make one t-shirt. Look after and reuse your old clothes and shop at charity shops. You can also turn off your taps when brushing your teeth to stop unneeded excessive water waste. Finally, those of us who are intelligent, noble people, we see that a more resourceful use of our planet's water would make a profound impact on our carbon footprint. So we're gonna be looking at persuasive language and our model text has lots of persuasive language in it because it is a persuasive speech. So persuasive language is language to help encourage someone or persuade someone to do something or change their thinking. So my first question to you is which would you prefer? Which car would you prefer? If I could give you one of these cars right now, which one would you choose? I think I'd definitely choose the one on the right. The one on the left looks broken down, old, it's got smoke coming out of it, whereas this new Tesla is a sports Tesla. It looks beautiful, it's really clean, it's low to the ground, I know it works. However, what if I described them rather than giving you a picture? So this is building a picture in your head. The first car, this is a classic, well-loved car. Its faded red paint gives it a fun, edgy vibe. It can seat five people comfortably and has soft, squidgy seats, perfect for long road trips. Ooh, second one. This car's paint is like a post box and shines brightly. It is low to the ground and very fast. Now, see how I've changed the way you think about those things. In the, when you've got a picture, it doesn't look that great. When actually, when I've used persuasive language, I've used my expanded noun phrase to describe the car and I've changed things to make them sound positive. Like it's a classic well-loved car. Well, it clearly was a well-loved car at one point because it's been used so much, but it doesn't look well-loved in the picture. It's faded red, red paint. It does have faded red paint. I'm not lying, but I'm just saying that because it has faded red paint, it makes it look cool. 
and that it has seats five people, it has soft squidgy seats. I'm trying to make positives out of the negatives. I'm trying to convince someone to want to buy this car. Now, which one sounds more persuasive? Come buy a chocolate. Come buy a chocolate. It's a very short sentence. Or why not try Miss Mulvenna's dark, creamy chocolate? You'll be surprised by its rich, crunchy texture. Definitely the second one. The first one is short and snappy, but it doesn't tell us much about the chocolate. Why would I just want to get one? Whereas this one describes the chocolate as dark and creamy. It draws me in. It has a rhetorical question. It makes me want to try it. It's You've got um, a, a um, modal verb. You will be surprised by its rich, crunchy texture. And it's telling me about the chocolate so that I can imagine it in my head. It's painting a picture, like the picture of the Tesla. It's painting it in my head. Come buy a chocolate. Doesn't tell me what the top chocolate's like. It doesn't paint a picture in my head. Let's have a go at up-leveling this sentence. So you can pause the video and try and up-level eat this apple and convince me to want to eat the apple or buy the apple. You could add in a rhetorical question or an expanded noun phrase to apple to make it sound better and describing words. So make me, convince me now to want to eat or buy this apple. Brilliant, so hopefully you've used some of the features on the side and you've thought about how you could turn the language to make it uh, more persuasive for me to want to buy it. Here's my example. Love juicy red apples, so I've started with a rhetorical question and I have an expanded noun phrase and I've used one of my sentence starters for my rhetorical question. You will love this crispy fruit sensation. So I've used um, descriptive words, I've used adjectives, I've used the word sensation, I've got an exclamation mark. That sounds a lot more convincing than eat this apple. So when you're doing persuasive writing, you need to think, how would I feel as an audience? Would I want to buy this? Would I want to do what I'm trying to say? Let's see how we could persuade someone to buy this car. So I've listed some things, some facts about this car and how I've made them positive. So it's white. So I could describe that it's a nice white color. It's, it is white, isn't it? I'm not lying about that, but I'm just going to twist the truth to persuade the people to want to buy it. It has four wheels. So I can say it has four working wheels. It's a classic Beetle. That's the type of car. It's an old classic car. It has beautiful curved windows. It has these lovely curves. And it's the, it's the only car like it. It's the only car in the world. So I've made it unique, which means people will want to buy it because it's the only one. So what we want to do is try and make this old car sound like this beautiful white new Beetle. Come and buy this beautiful snow white Beetle. It has jet black wheels, good for gripping various road surfaces. The windows are uniquely curved to let in lots of fresh air and daylight. Love cruising in a classic car? Then this vehicle is for you. Let's have a look at the features I've used to make my old banged up car sound new. So I've used strong modal language. Oh, let me get my, sorry, let me get my highlighter and not my pen. There we go. Come and buy, that's a command. Come and buy, it's telling me what to do. It's not saying you might want to buy, have you considered buying? It's making me want to go and get it. This beautiful snow white, so I've described the color. I've said that it's beautiful. It has jet black wheels, good for gripping. So that means I'm going to want to get it. So it's telling me a good thing about the car. The windows are unique, one of a kind. That's a synonym for one of a kind. So it means that I want to buy it because no other cars have a curved um, window. And they let in fresh air and daylight. Now they're positive things, aren't they? I'm not lying about the Beetle. I'm just saying that I'm just trying to make it positive. And then I've got my rhetorical question. Love cruising in a classic car. I've got some, um, I've got some alliteration there as well. And this vehicle is for you. It makes it personal. It's telling me that it is actually for me. Rather than buy this horrible banged up car, I'm trying to convince people this language makes me want to buy the Beetle. Now, if you normally do one chili, what I would like you to focus on today is just trying to up level some sentences and using your language and your expanded noun phrases to make me want to do the things that are in these statements. So for the first one, taste this cake. Now make, convince me to actually want to taste it. 
what words could you use? So I've got a little vocab bank here, but you can also look in the dictionary or have a think about how you'd convince me to want to eat a cake. Buy this dog. How are you going to convince me, Miss Mulvena or Miss Fink, to buy a dog? Smell this rose. So they're all commands and I want you to expand on them and make them better. If you normally do two or three chilies, I would like you to convince me, just like we did with the beetle, to buy this old banged up colourful car. So what things could you say to paint a positive picture in my head? How are you going to make me picture a really nice car and not picture this car? You need rhetorical questions, you need to describe the colours and shapes. So if you need to have a look back at what I did for the old beetle car and you want to magpie any words or language, feel free. But I expect to have a big paragraph like an advert telling me why I should buy this car. Make it positive. I don't want to see this car is horrible, this car has no windows, this car has no wheels. I want to see this car is colourful. This car has a unique or one of a kind paint job. It's got, it's old, it's classic, it's good at surviving in a desert. Make it positive, tell me why I should buy it. I hope you have fun trying to convince me and Miss Fink to buy this old crusty car and making it into a positive thing. Um, please do send your work to the year five email. We'll be checking it every single day. You need to be sending us at least one piece of work. So please do send us your persuasive writing and we can tell you whether we think we would actually buy your car. Have a lovely rest of your day, year five, and I will speak to you all soon. Bye.